Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Renf, and I'm here to talk to you about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, the state of Montana, and beyond. So let's kick things off with the last best morning show with a little bit of weather. Well, yesterday, it got as high as, as hot and as high as the 90s. Um, t today, expect a lot of the similarities happening today. Tonight, you're going to have that slight chance of thunderstorms because there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be some cold coming in a little bit um, overnight with the lows into the 60s through 50s in the Saturday night region. But of course, expect highs into the, fifth, uh, into the 80s throughout the weekend. And then we're going to see a lot of 90, 80 degree weather happening all next week. So it's a great day to get out outdoors and enjoy some um, outdoor recreation and all that stuff. Um, here, let's talk about some of the news. Uh, um, the mushroom season is slated to go on for another month or so with uh, fires knocking down trees and the wet weather recently has provided the perfect storm for morel mushrooms. And if you don't know what morel mushrooms are, it's these guys. You know, if you haven't seen these guys being sold at the farmer's market, these are kind of a very little uh, browner uh, uh, on the... Uh, on the head, but um, expect to kind of see a lot of these a lot more often during your uh, farmer's market season, while many uh, uh, aficionados of the picking and gathering of the morel mushrooms have uh, been easily defined honeycomb surface and that does not resemble any other fungus in the burn area. Morels also grow along rivers and stream banks, but are harder to find in the but in the brush they are prized by cooks for the firm textures nutty flavor and great pairing with ability with meats eggs and pastas the lolo and kootenai national forest has some of the most productive fire uh, post-fire morel areas in 2018 <laughs> along with the state 700,000 acres of federally burned lands the mushrooms are not only in season but thriving so some good news out of the fire season of last year uh, but going into this week Donald Trump visited Montana he was uh, in Great Falls just last night uh, basically uh, promoting um, Matt Rosendale to uh, unseat our Senator uh, John Tester um, Tester is one of 10 Senate Democrats running for re-election in the states that Trump won in the 2016 election. So Trump singled out Tester in April, uh, saying that the farmer from Big Sky will have a big price to pay for releasing allegations against VA nominee Jackson that include drunkenness, over uh, prescribing medication and fostering a hostile work environment. Jackson denied these claims, but withdrew his nomination after um, the controversy went through. Uh, so the president uh, is also, of course, um, uh, if you read an article, the Missoulian, every pretty much every news outlet in uh, Montana posted something about this, about him visiting Great Falls, and um, you can check it all out online. Um, in national news, former felons in Florida want their right to vote back in Florida. One in 10 people are not eligible to vote in the state of Florida. One felon by the name of Joanne uh, Calversi got her chance to get the vote back, but hundreds of others may not be so fortunate. Of course, back in the day when River, uh, Governor Rick Scott took office seven years ago, he rolled back reforms to put back by his predecessor, uh, Charlie uh, Crist, more than 150,000 um, people from Florida had their voting rights restored during a uh, um, Christ's four years in office. In the seven years since then, Rick Scott has approved restoring voting rights to over 3,000 people. So um, a lot of times, uh, felons, uh, if you are a former felon for one reason or another, you get your, you don't have the right to vote. And it takes a long uh, yearly, pr it takes many years as a process to go uh, to have a hearing in front of a judge to get your voting rights back. So many believe that the uh, reform in Florida may have the best chance of overturning Florida's ban on felon voting. And of course, a recent poll showed supporting of more than two thirds of the state voters will vote in favor of giving the vote back to felons, uh, former felons mind you. All right. So anyways, uh, that's about what's happening in the news. Here's some um, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. We got a lot of new programs airing this weekend. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, new movies that are coming out this weekend. So stay with me. So most Americans and many people from all around the world are familiar with the tragic story of how vast herds of the Plains bison were hunted to the brink of extinction in just a few decades in the 19th century a dark period in our history. Bison weren't the only species that were subject to this wasteful and uncontrolled market hunting. By 1900, all of Montana's big game species were nearly wiped out. 
Fortunately, in the early 20th century, with the formation of new organizations, including the National Wildlife Federation, and leadership from people like Theodore Roosevelt and George Bird Grinnell, we restored um, important wildlife species like elk, bighorn sheep, deer, and pronghorn to their native habitats. The one big game species that we have not accomplished this significant restoration is the bison. So for presentations, we have 10 total. So we're gonna do, try to do six in the first session, take a break and do uh, the rest in the, the second session. We're gonna try to go six or so minutes per presentation with a few minutes afterwards. And we highly encourage questions, not only from the audience, but from our judging panel. Um, because you know, guys put in the effort and have some really cool ideas and we want to hear more about it. Can't believe we're breaking up. Breaking Ain't no up. way for breaking up, baby. Don't treat me this way. This way. You're going to be lonely someday. After you've gone, you left me crying. After you've gone, there's no denying. You feel blue, you feel sad. to achieve more democratic and representational politics as the fault of ordinary Russians and Soviet people. Because you know those Russians and Soviet people. They love authoritarianism. They're people who love a whip and a strong man. Of course, we in America don't love a strong man. Look what happened to George Herbert Walker Bush. Right? They even possess a political culture or even a genetic propensity to slavery, they disregard the value of human life, they only represent and, and respect the strong, and they want such people to rule over them. I consider such views not only racist, but fantasies of national character and embedded culture that are much more revealing of their authors than they are of the actual experience and history of the largest country on the globe. Yes, the answer to your question is yes, and um, and uh, we have uh, done that for years, actually, in terms of the collaboration and reaching out directly um, to all of the reservations. And we have, at the U.S. Attorney's Office, we actually have uh, identified AUSAs that are designated for each reservation and they go uh, to the reservations and they have what are called MDT multidisciplinary um, team meetings and uh, I went around and I trained our office specifically on um, sex trafficking and human trafficking uh, and and those particular AUSAs guy went with the individual um, AUSAs went to the reservations and we did specific traf um, trafficking training anti-trafficking training hey guys welcome back you can get those programs and more by logging on to our website MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resources for everything Missoula-centric. We go out and shoot all the videos in Missoula County. If you have a program in mind for us to shoot, give us a ring at 542-6228. Otherwise, you can always go online and you can fill out a form for request event recording. You can also go to submit a program. So let's say you already have a program and you're a YouTuber and you want to get a wider audience, you're more than welcome to hop on our public access television train but of course if you want to come on down here pick up a new skill in media you can come down every Wednesday at 5 30 p.m. all right if you want to learn more information about my morning show my morning show airs every Wednesday and Friday morning at from 9 to 10 a.m. Um, you can find me on Facebook um, you can find me on YouTube you can find me on the Twitter um, it's all sorts of wonderfulness that you guys can find all by looking up Wake Up Missoula on the Google. And yes, I know what I'm doing. Um, moving on, let's talk about some movies. Hey, hey, there's a bunch of movies coming out this week. And I hope 
you guys really think about what you're getting into. This is pre-critic. This is where I judge movies based on um, absolutely not seeing them. I have no idea what these movies are about, so I'm just going to make it up. So from the creators of 22 movies that are pretty much uh, all the same movie, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp tells the tale of a, t a tick-sized superhero who has to find the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis take over the world, or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, enjoy yet another by-the-books Marvel movie that has leaned on its comedy chops than this heavy-handed Infinity Gauntlet. Moving on, there's another movie coming out that's already been out, which came out July 4th because, hey, you know, Will Smith doesn't do July 4th movies anymore. Uh, Independence Day was a, a one-time deal back in the 1990s. But Marissa Tomei is in this movie, still coasting on her Oscar win from supporting actress for My Cousin Vinny. Um, comes an ensemble cast that shows us an America that has a couple things in common with the real America and just kind of wings it. So the first Purge... Uh, where many people, so this is a prequel. The first Purge isn't the first movie of the Purge movies. It's supposed to be a prequel full. Anyways, where many people, you know, are just saying that this movie is just like where America is heading. But it really doesn't matter because it's just a movie. And you will see more creativity, creativity in the kills than the, the actual plot. Also, this movie comes out July 4th, uh, not because it, it leans on America, but it also... Uh, means that Ant-Man will probably completely take it out and won't be getting any money while Ant-Man and the Wash will probably pretty much take over the box office this weekend as well as any Marvel movie has basically done most weekends. Hey guys, uh, next week is our t our uh, three week of rush of all our summer camps. MCAT is going to be closed to the public. If you need to um, check out or returning to cameras, we have those times set for after five. If you need to schedule some studio time or anything like that, make sure you do it by appointment. Um, moving on, here is another video for you guys. Uh, you know, I decided last week that um, I think I thought it was a fairly good idea to kind of make a couple videos, an example of what to expect um, for the kids. Um, for their documentary. So this is a documentary that I made. It's completely false, just so you guys know. Just a little warning. It's a fun little video that I uh, made with the help of the uh, the usuals here at MCAT. So without further ado, here is I Don't Cup. Water, water, everywhere, and not a drop to drink. It stinks to think about the water that comes down only to be wasted in the deeps. Water, water, nowhere in my cup. Anonymous. started, you know, in the very beginning with the, with the trees, um, where, uh, and the poor tree community, oh my god, I, uh, I can't speak for them, but it's just, it's a tragic, it's a tragic story that goes deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, starting with the paper cups, of course. Back in 1830, the first disposable cup was made by Edward Disposable, where the name comes from. Um, it was, it was his lifelong work, a cup that you didn't need to wash. It's, it's our basic human right to get cups. Those hippies, we should put them in prison for stopping our way to get water. They're, 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 they're getting rid of our basic needs of water usage. Summer of 92 is when I think I heard that paper cups were first starting to disappear. I think, I think 9-11 was after it. No, it was before it. Yeah, so everybody was just like, oh my god, this is the worst thing since, uh, yeah. 
I think I was sitting at home one day playing video games and I was, I was sitting there and I, I was parched, you know, as any person would be. They'd go and get a glass of water, grab a paper cup, you know. I look at the shelf and there's none there. I call my parents and I ask what's, what's wrong and the entire world is out of paper cups. I was parched for the entire day. To whom it may concern, it has come to everyone's attention that there is a cup shortage in our midst. And I, for one, am getting tired of going for a cup with my right hand while going for the water switch with my left hand and not having a cup. I'm sure you haven't heard about the recent shortage in cups, but something needs to be addressed or we're going to deal with a massive shortage on something we should not take lightly. When I was a young person of non-gender specificity, I came to the conclusion I wanted to be a fish. So when I grow up, I can just jump between paper cups. I will never get that feeling back, and it's all your fault for overusing cups. The best solution now is to vote in favor of people who follow this growing issue. As a produced for single-use disposable cups and other sim similar disposable cups, constitute major... I think they should pass a new bill that uh, taxes, heavily taxes water jug, uh, water jug use if it outnumbers the amount of cups. This is, this is getting really political. Um, how do I, well, obviously we need to get better education, you know, for, for our cups, you know, better homes. You know, we keep taking cups, fathers, mothers away from them, you know, it's just like, it's very dramatic for young cups to deal with. And so we need to, we need to treat them better in our society or else they'll be gone. Couldn't you have just walked down the hallway to get water from the fountain? From the fountain? From the fountain? We have a fountain? We have a water fountain here? Actually, actually, can I go get some water real quick? Yeah. It's not the same. It's it's such a long trek. It it it. it for people like me, it's it's such a difficult thing. If you don't have motivation, it, when there's no paper cups, you lose all motivation. You don't want to do anything. <clears throat> what do you hope to happen? in the future so that this sort of thing would never happen again. Um, more water fountains. That was a good water fountain, for sure. Well, now that we have a fountain, just drink out of that. I mean, disposable cups. I mean, they're, they're a brilliant piece of technology, but like, you can just bypass that altogether, you know? It's like, it's really a new age of water. Hey guys, welcome back. Let me tell you about some art that's happening um, in the downtown Missoula area. It is July 6th. It is First Friday. It is the first Friday of the month. Therefore, it's a great way to be out and about between 5 and 8 p.m. in the downtown Missoula area. There's going to be some music playing outside. There's going to be a whole bunch of fun uh, art exhibits that are going to be up and running. So you get to check it all out. And I have it all here for you guys on good authority. I don't know why people say that, but... Um, I have some art for you guys, so let's kick things off with the first one at the Radius. So Radius Gallery, um, starting as early as 4 p.m., uh, join the uh, join the throngs of art revealers uh, ugh, for a delightful creative art walk. The art 
the radius gallery, you'll see an exhibit. They would uh, the exhibit is called "I Would Like to Be the Air," featuring works by Courtney Blazon, Mel Griff Griffin, Randy O'Brien, and Deb Schwartzkopf. So, check that out. But also, if you guys don't want to go into the main studio, they have a side studio right next door to it where they're going to be doing a sidecar. This July's Radius Gallery sidecar show features the artist Amanda Beebley talking about old recipes and techniques of plaster, paint, and suko mostly used in architectural cosmetics of buildings over the last few hundred years. You can check that out. And Radius Gallery is off of uh, Main Street. Up if you're going up towards uh, Union Club. But anyways, uh, first Friday show, Healing Roots with uh, Betsy Beebe. Um, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center is hosting an art show with Betsy. Uh, a local beer and treats, art and fair trade shopping at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. There will be a fun night. Betsy's paintings are incredibly uh, incredible displays and explorations into our natural world and wildlife. Up next, we got... This is from the Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Montana Properties. Um, they will feature works by artist Dennis A. Sloan, a simplify, uh, uh, he simp who simplifies surfaces and textures, then emphasizes the effects of light on those surfaces. Subjects are uh, abstractions of images I find in nature, according to Dennis. This is Oil on Canvas. Up next, we got Murphy Ceramics. Uh, Courtney Murphy is uh, going to be at Noteworthy Paper and Press. Uh, you can join them for, uh, so she's working in clay w she, while she was living in Brooklyn, New York. And after several years of working for potters around the city, she moved to Portland to study ceramics at Oregon College. Um, in 2009, she came to Montana where she completed a two-year artist in residence at the Archie uh, Bray Foundation in the Ceramic Arts in Helena. She fell in love with Montana and short-term residency at Red Lodge Clay Center and long-term residency at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So this is going to be at Noteworthy Paper and Press. Um, happening today. Um, first Friday, uh, Bernice's Bakery. Uh, this is ex um, Experiencing Landscapes. So um, Jenny uh, Chaffin, uh, so from the home of Missoula, to a tent in the Yukon backcountry, the photographs represent I immersive pl in place through minimally pr uh, processed images. Uh, she aimed to share personal experiences by documenting her perspective and capturing stories of other embedded within landscape. Up next, we got Jesse Smith here. Uh, this is black. Uh, this is gonna be a black owl tattoo. These are a lot of uh, concept arts, and the, um, regardless, uh, because uh, with a lot of art that people put on their skin, a lot of times they had to come up with a concept. So this concept, a lot of these concepts are put up on their walls at Black Owl Tattoo. So you get to go check out all those art as well, and they'll be showing special selection of pieces from her Ink Inktober series, and you can learn more by going to the Black Owl. Up next, we got visible. Um, of course, you can kind of see the words kind of uh, being invisible. So this is uh, with Jess Tattery at La Stella Blue. Uh, the collection is mixed media, a play with texture and color, exploring uh, society's view on the human body. The artwork will be available and will be on sale. Uh, the next one we got is Summer Evening with Salt Mine Artists. So. This is Gallery 709 inside the Montana Art and Framing host a representative of salt mine artists, uh, Bev Glukert, Stephen Glukert, uh, and many other artists are going to be at the Gallery 709. Um, they'll meet at, with the artists and discuss their work with contemporary art in Montana and enjoy views of Missoula from the patio. Animals is happening at the, clay uh, at the artist shop. It's just a bunch of works in mixed media. And this is art by John McGee. Um, Second to last, uh, here is at the Clay Studio of Missoula. It's called Shapes. Hmm. I see it. Uh, the Clay Studio of Missoula is proud to present a solo exhibit uh, featuring the ceramic works of current artist in residence Andrew Avarkian. His hand-built terracotta vessels bring the richness of public architecture from into homes and individuals, intimate environments, architecture design, abstract painting, and color theory in s are some current ideas driving his work. And you can check that out at the Clay Studio of Missoula.
Up next, and finally, this is going to be a First Friday Talk with Courtney Blazon. Um, and, of course, her art's going to be at the Radius Gallery, and you can go check her out as well. I just want to give her a shout-out. And she's a really great artist, and she has a lot of good examples of her art. Her art has been featured in the Brazil Art Museum, I believe some in the Gallery 709, but pretty much she's pretty prolific in the Missoula art scene. She has a traffic signal box, and if you get to check out some of her art, you get to check out some of the the, the, the big traffic signal box, which is located right by, by right uh, next to El Cazador. Just look where the street light is, and you'll see the power box, and you'll see that not only did she paint the power box, but the uh, the pole that goes up to the light. So check all that out and more by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, I'm going to end it right there. I do. I don't. I have art clip for you guys because this is an art clip featuring at the Zootown Arts Community Center, and this is the last time you'll get to see this before they change their artwork altogether. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about all the other events, non-art related. <laughs> Well, as usual, every uh, morning, every weekday morning, uh, Mismo Gymnastics, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, and Ridge Acker Sports Center is all the place to go for all your indoor fun for your morning. It's, it's, a, it's a fun way for kids to get um, do some tumbles, do some flips, and all that stuff in a safe, padded environment in the state of an art, blah, 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 trampoline setting, all this stuff. But of course, you know, if you've seen the show, you probably hear me say it all the time, but I just want to say, say it once again. And here are some other things that are happening, of course, you know, Missoula Public Library hosts Tiny Tales and Storytime. Uh, one of them has the book out loud to a group of kids, and the other ones are more like you just get a whole bunch of books, and they uh, the librarians helping with you just kind of collect books, and the kids just kind of read by the by themselves. But usually it's kind of chaotic. Um, Yarns is happening at the Music Public Library at noon today as well. It's a good way to uh, call in all knitters and crocheters. You can bring your lunch and your latest project to the boardroom on Friday, so every Friday at 12 p.m. to your uh, end your week with some craft fun. Um, cribbage and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center um, starts at 1230. Um, if you're interested in doing a little crib and a little bridge, you can go to the Missoula Senior Center all starting around lunchtime. Teen Riders Group um, is Missoula Public Library from 330 to 530. Are you a teen writer who needs a little inspiration and or feedback? Come to the Teen Writers Group and let your inner artist flourish. Meaning places vary, but the young adult librarian on duty will know where to send you. Aladdin. Hey, if you guys are going to be uh, going out tonight, why not go to the theater? See some um, prospective young um, actors or and actresses um, happening at the Missoula Children's Theater tonight at 4 p.m. and at 6 p.m. Two different shows uh, for kids who've been doing the, the uh, Latin summer camp program all week. MCT hosts basically a different summer camp. It seems like every single week you can find out more information by going to mctinc.org. Uh, of course... The rest of the night events are happening for Friday, are all your first Friday events, but I'm just going to kind of go over a couple, maybe your late night stuff you guys are planning on going to a couple shows tonight. Much like Charlie's going to be at the Union Club, Double Down Band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, in Sassan in, uh, in a sigh. Sorry about that. That's uh, It's going to be a funk band. It seems uh, experimental, um, I especially with their title. Um, it's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be some funk music. Um, 
Chamber Music Montana Music at the Winery will be the at Missoula Winery and Event Center. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. You can find it more at MissoulaEvents.net. Um, I am going to kind of, I should show you another art clip for you guys. Uh, this is going to be playing, this is going to be uh, going on through the month of July, but I just want to show you this as well because this is going to be at the Missoula Art Museum because I want you to get a little excited about art that's happening in Missoula. So here's what, what's at the art museum, but this is only an example. You should check it out yourself tonight at 5. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with a little bit of Saturday uh, madness at your farmer's markets. Uh, so you got the People's Market on Pine Street, you got the Farmer's Market at the Red X's, and then you have the Clark Fork River Market at the uh, Higgins Bridge, just underneath the bridge. You can't miss it. It's near Karis Park in the Best Read Park. Um, Puzzle Club, Black Hat Coffee Bake Shop. Um, this is new for sure. This is a Puzzle Club is for brain injury support group, helping folks find the pieces of their life after brain injury and a place for them to, for them, their life puzzle. So it happens every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. at Black Cat Bake Shop. Also happening at 11, Moon Randolph Homestead hosts a bunch of tours and of all their tours happening from 11 to 5 p.m. They got a lot of summer camps happening over there too. Basically, um, uh, it's, it's basically about, uh, it's a summer camp where the kids do chores around the Moon Randolph homestead. And hey, you know, a couple uh, uh, city councils ago, uh, they, uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the caretakers of Moon, Rand Moon Randolph homestead uh, were very surprised that the kids really liked doing said chores, much to the parents' surprise. And you can learn about this and more. You can go to Moon Randolph um, homestead.org for more information. Secret Life of Dragonfly at Mizzou Insectarium. Uh, um, the, the, dragonfly, the dragonfly is so precise, 95% of their uh, food gets caught in their mouth. Um, well, 95% uh, of their prey is caught, just so you guys know. So there's like a five point, um, maybe they'll get away, maybe they won't. So that's the secret life of dragonflies in Minnesota and Sectarium. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to say this from memory, but that's what I remember. And this happens at 11. So the Roxy Jr. Uh, so uh, Roxy Theater hosts a kid-friendly afternoon movie at the Roxy. And it's the Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid, not the uh, Jaden Smith one. And it's happening at 2 p.m. So if you don't know the story of the Karate Kid, it's crazy. It's uh, it's about a kid who moves to the valley in California, and the basically it's kind of uh, the cool thing to do is karate, but he doesn't know karate, so he learns karate and fights these uh, bullies in a karate thing, and he wins. Spoiler? I don't know, but pretty much. Uh, Railroad of the <laughs> Lower Clark Fork. Uh, basically, jumping way ahead from your movie at the Rockets Theater is Railroads of the Lower Clark Fork, Frenchtown Pond State Park. Discover the rich railroad history as Bill and Jane Taylor discuss Railroads of the Lower Clark Fork at Frenchtown Pond State Park's West Shelter on Saturday, July 7th at 7 p.m. So basically, they're authors of five books of in Montana railroad history. Wow. 
Explore the history of railroads in the Lower Clark Fork. Develop a strong connection with the past by learning more about the Northern Pacific Wallace Branch built in 1890 and the Milwaukee Road from 1910 to 1980. Enjoy fascinating stories with the paint and pictures of railroad and life of the Lower Clark Fork and celebrate these local trains and tracks. So there's a lot of history about the train tracks here in the in Missoula as well. Uh, the Kim Williams Trail, the one that kind of runs right next to the river, that used to be a passenger rail uh, road, and they used to have, and that tall building next to the river as well was a train station before they converted into many offices in there. Uh, it is, of course, this event is free and open to the public, and it starts at 7 p.m. at Frenchtown. Chamber Music, Montana UM Masterwork Series. The University of Montana is hosting uh, music favorites, uh, works by Mozart, Minetti, and more. And it's going to be the Missoula Recital Hall at the University of Montana tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $12 and $8 uh, are available at the door. So um, here are your Saturday day night. Saturday day day. Uh, I stuttered there for a second. Um, Saturday night events. Top Hat is doing Dean Ween Group. Absolutely with Chris Simmons of the Ballander. Gladdy Friday is going to be at Union Club. Um, Mrs. G, country music, is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, I do want to mention Sunday. Sorry about this. I'll wrap this up pretty quickly. But Sunday is showing off for day make a, make a dream. Anyways, um, at the Missoula Fairgrounds, they're doing a car show. And... Uh, any, um, it's a benefit car show. Anything with wheels, old or new, ride you want to show off. This year's event will be held at the Missoula Fairgrounds, and you can um, you can register as early as 8 a.m. at the at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, this year will be visited by campers of the Teen Heads Up Conference at Camp Make a Dream. This group of amazing kids from ages 13 to 18 will have who have been diagnosed with a brain tumor. They create the award, they judge the event, and they present the award for this benefit car show. And also, if you guys are planning on going to Rodeo, go to the 76th Annual Drummond uh, Kiwanis PRCA Rodeo, and it's going to be at the American Legion Rodeo Grounds in Drummond, Montana. One of the oldest continually run rodeos in Montana, the Drummond Rodeo is a full day of activities to celebrate the cowboy way of life in rural Montana. Find out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net for all those events and more, but hey, what's going on in Missoula? This is what's going on. Go to MissoulaEvents.net for more information about all this and more, but... That's pretty much it for the end of my show. If you want to learn more information about me and my show, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write it out twice. If you want to learn about uh, MCAT, you go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is the place to go for signing up for summer camps, signing up for um, MCAT, and also more. Um, signing up for MCAT to do shoots in the Missoula County area as well. So anyways, I have a brand new song I want to show you guys. Well, I wrap up my show, so thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Rapp. <laughs>